Welcome to a Code Report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem one from the Hacker Earth Hour Storm number two contest entitled Counting Frog Paths. The problem states there is a frog initially placed at the origin of the coordinate plane. In exactly one second, the frog can either move up one unit, move right one unit, or stay still. In other words, from position XY, the frog can spend one second to move to the following three positions. After T seconds, a villager who sees the frog reports that the frog lies on or inside a square of side length s with the bottom left hand coordinate being x y and the s extending to the other three points. Calculate how many points with integer coordinates on or inside this square that could be the frog's position after exactly t seconds. And note that the constraints for our problem is that x and y will be between 100, uh, s will be between 1 and 100, and t will be between 0 and 400. So let's take a look at the example that Hacker Earth provided us with. So here is uh, our input example. So uh, 2, 2 is the starting coordinates of our square, 3 is the side length of our square, and 6 is the number of uh, seconds that we have for our frog to move. And uh, Hacker Earth kindly provided us with a visualization of this, and it looks as follows. And the red dots represent where the frog can get to in six seconds. So note that once again, the frog starts at the origin of our coordinate plane. And basically what it means is that uh, every second, the frog can do one of three things. It can move up, it can move to the right, or it can just stay where it is. And so that means it could spend all six seconds moving up, which would uh, result in the frog being up here. And uh, from there, uh, the next thing it could do would be to move up five and then move over one which would get it to here and if we continue to do this we end up with this sort of uh, line that represents the edge to which the frog can get to and because it can also use an operation to just stay where it is all of the positions to the left of this line are also possible places that the frog can get to so uh, the other three that we're concerned about are the three dots here uh, and the frog locations that are outside of this square uh, we're not concerned with. So our final answer for this problem is going to be 6 because the frog is able to get to uh, the following uh, 6 locations as represented in this diagram. So this is a pretty straightforward problem. All it's going to consist of is uh, creating two sort of indices to represent our x and y coordinate uh, that's going to start at sort of 0, 6 or whatever the number of moves we have are and then we're just going to uh, decrement our y coordinate and increment our x coordinate and then that's going to give us this line and each time we do that we're going to do a plus equals to our answer and we're going to make sure that we're only doing that when we're inside the square and the plus equals that we're going to do is it's going to be our current uh, y coordinate uh, minus or sorry our current x coordinate minus our uh, left hand side of our square which is going to be given to us by x and then we can just do sort of a min and a max uh, in order to make sure that we're not adding uh, these um, or, or sorry, the, the points outside here if we have a line that goes completely to the right of our square. So let's take a look at our code. So here is a C++ solution. You can see at the top here we're just declaring our uh, five integers, uh, which are going to be x, y, which is the bottom left-hand corner of our square, s, the side length of our square, and t, the number of seconds. And then we're also declaring uh, c, which is going to be uh, the number of spots, the count of these spots that our frog can get to. So then on the next line, reading in each of the values for x, y, s, and t. And then we enter a for loop where we're initializing the two moving indices uh, i, which is going to track uh, the sort of x coordinate and j which is going to track the y coordinate so i is initialized to 0 j is initialized to t and uh, then we're going to do this while i is less than or equal to t and we're doing a pre-increment on i and a pre-decrement on j and so then we're checking if our uh, moving uh, y coordinate which is j is greater than or equal to y or less than or equal to y plus s that means it's in or on our square we can do a plus equal to C. Uh, 
which for here we're going to do basically i minus x uh, plus 1, and we want to uh, floor this at 0 and then seal it, sealing it at s plus 1, which is the maximum length or number of points on the edge of a square. Um, and so an alternative way to do this is you could just put the extra two conditions and avoid a min and a max up here so you could have sort of uh, com comparisons of i to x, but I went with this solution. And so once you uh, finish this for loop, uh, you can just output C and then you'll have uh, your answer. So our next solution is our Java solution, uh, very similar. The biggest difference is how you read in the input, and it takes up a few more lines here. Uh, but the for loop is very similar. So once again, our two moving indices i and j set the same way, uh, pre-incremented and uh, pre-decremented the same way. And the only thing that's different in here is our uh, minimax function, which you have to get from the math library. Uh, so it's math.minimath.max. And uh, then on the final line, you're just outputting c again. Moving on to our Python solution, uh, this is probably the most terse solution of all of them, reading in our uh, x, y, s, and t on the first line, uh, then setting our j outside our loop, uh, and also setting c, which is going to be the count of the number of positions our frog can get to, and then we have our for loop our if condition and then our plus equals to c using the min and max functions and then also uh, at the tail end of each iteration making sure that we decrement our uh, value j and our final bonus solution is a Kotlin solution. Uh, so this looks pretty similar to the Python solution when it comes to reading the input. Um, and note that we have uh, two different sort of type inferences here, val and var. Var is for variables that are allowed to be modified, so mutable types. And uh, val is for uh, variables that are immutable so that you can't uh, change once they're set. So this is sort of the equivalent of uh, if these were um, auto, all three of these were auto in C++, uh, val would be const auto and uh, var would just be auto without the const. And then we come down here to our for loop. It's pretty terse syntax and we have a similar if and uh, min and max uh, lines uh, when you compare them to uh, the C++ and Java solutions. And on the final line, we're just outputting uh, our value C. So the last thing to talk about is the time complexity of this problem, which is going to be uh, linear in our, our number of seconds that we have. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.